Today, I'm going to show you how to use iMovie for OS X, which whether you know it or not, has probably come pre-installed on your new iMac or MacBook Pro. If you can't find the app, go to the App Store and download it. It's free and surprisingly includes a great range of features for the beginner and seasoned editor alike. As a digital creative, I've been using many different software titles from Final Cut Pro and After Effects to Premiere Pro and even DaVinci Resolve. Now, although iMovie can't be compared to these pro editing applications, it incorporates just enough features for most people wanting to produce video productions for YouTube, social media, corporate presentations, and even family videos. iMovie lets you cut your video clips, rearrange them, speed them up, slow them down, color grade them, add typography, music tracks and voiceover, apply simple transition effects, and even provide you with the ability to edit green screen video. So for those of you needing access to more advanced functionality, including the ability to layer more than two tracks of video, advanced audio effects, more flexible typography and animation, then Final Cut Pro or Premiere may be an option for you. But most people are gonna be satisfied with iMovie and it's certainly a great place to start. One of the good things about iMovie is the ability to transport projects to Final Cut Pro. So if you outgrow iMovie at any stage, you can bring in your older iMovie projects and re-edit them in Final Cut Pro. The other thing that Apple have been working on is the integration between their mobile apps and the desktop, allowing you to commence a project in iMovie for iOS and then continue to edit on your desktop via a simple share file feature. So now that we've covered all that, let's get straight into it and learn how to use iMovie. Step one is to open iMovie. When you do, you should be in the projects tab and if you haven't used it before, this will be empty. If you have, then you'll notice your previous projects will appear in this window. Create a new project by clicking on the large plus button. When you do, a pop-up option will appear. The first option is Movie, which lets you combine videos, photos, and music to make your own movie. And the second option is Trailer, which allows you to follow a template to create a Hollywood-style movie trailer. This tutorial is about creating your own unique movie. So let's click on the first option, which is Movie. When you do, this will get you into the main interface, which has four main sections that you need to become familiar with. On the left, you'll see a media window where you can import your footage, photos, and audio clips. Just above that, a menu providing access to the main features of the application. Then to the right, the preview window that allows you to view your edit as you go. And at the bottom, the video editing timeline where you can drag and drop video clips and perform your main edit. At the very bottom, an audio layer for adding music and voiceover to your project. There's also the project's settings, which you can access just below the preview window. And we'll jump back in and have a look at that later on in the tutorial. So let's go ahead and import some media into our project. I've got a few video clips, some still photos and a logo, and also a music track that I want to use in this project, all sitting on a folder on my desktop. I can get them into the project in one of two ways. Option one is to drag them onto the import media arrow or click the arrow and navigate to the folder and select all of the items that I wish to import into this project. So once you've imported your media into the media browser, you can tap on any of the video clips and you'll notice they become highlighted in yellow. You can then drag your mouse along the clip from the beginning to the end to scrub the contents of the video and see what you have to work with. If you pick up a handle on the left-hand side, you can then set the import of the video and then grab the right handle and then drag inwards to the desired out point. Now you can grab the clip by putting your mouse cursor right in the middle of it and drag the clip down to the main timeline. Once you've done this, you can use your spacebar to tap and start playing your video on the timeline or you can press the play button in the larger video preview window on the right. Now I'm gonna drag the rest of my video clips down and start my first edit. The first thing that you'll notice is that your clips may not appear in the correct order that you want them to appear in your video. So to rearrange them, simply click on any clip and drag left or right into the correct order. After previewing, if you decide you want to trim the in and out points further, you can click to the front of the clip and drag in 
and the end of the clip until you get the footage to begin and end where you want it to. You can also split your clip at any point. To do this, use the mouse to get your cursor at any point in the timeline over your clip. Click to confirm where you want to make the cut, then go to the top menu and select Modify Split Clip. Or as an alternative, use the right click by tapping on the control key on the keyboard as you press the mouse. Then in the drop down menu, select Split Clip. If you want to delete a clip from the timeline, select it and hit the delete button. So that's pretty much all there is to creating your initial edit. You can continue to cut your clips, drag them left and right and reposition them until you get your basic edit in place. The next thing we're going to take a look at is creating a transition in between your clips. To access your transitions, click on the transitions tab on the top sub menu bar. You'll notice a number of transition options appear. Go ahead and drag down the transition of choice onto the transition icon which is depicted by two inward facing arrows. And these appear in between each clip on your timeline. So you can mix it up and apply various transition and effects to each cut. Transitions can be used to smooth out a cut by using a cross dissolve, a cross blur, or a fade to black or fade to white. If you're looking for something more attention grabbing, then you can go for a cube, mosaic, swap effect, etc. Go ahead and try them all out and see what works best for you and your project. Next up, we're going to take a look at adding layers to our video for overlay and picture in picture effects. To do this, we're going to drag an image onto our timeline, but this time, instead of placing on the bottom layer among the existing footage, drag it down above one of the existing clips on the timeline, let it go and drop it in place. If you place your mouse on the timeline where these two layers reside, you can scrub them, but you'll notice that only the top layer appears. This is normal as we haven't done anything to the top clip yet. Let's change the opacity of the top clip. To do this, we'll use the first icon in the top right hand sub menu bar that appears directly above the video preview window. This toolbar gives you access to advanced editing tools and we'll be going through that very shortly. To start with, we'll take a look at the video overlay icon, which is the first menu item represented by two intersecting squares. Click on it and it gives us a few options. The first is cutaway, which is where we can use the opacity slider to change the opacity of the top clip. So the bottom layer will become visible and then blend in with the top layer. Let's click on the cutaway drop down menu and look what else we can do. The first option is green screen, blue screen. This is where you can replace a green screen background with an alternative video image. The next is split screen. When you click on this, you'll notice that your top and bottom layers on your timeline will now appear left to right. You can then use the new drop down option that appears next to the split screen to change the position of these two images. You can go right to left, you can go top, bottom, bottom, top, etc. A number of options are available. The next option is picture in picture, which lets us place a video clip over the top of our video. By default, it will place a small rectangle on the top layer in the right hand corner of the screen. Click on it to place it anywhere you like, top left, bottom left, or bottom right, or even in the center. You can grab it on the corners to change the size of the box. You can even use the menu items at the top to add a border, ranging from a dotted line, thin line, or thick line. You can change the color of the border and even add a drop shadow effect. This feature can also be used to apply a watermark logo or company logo over your footage. To do so, import a transparent PNG version of your logo into your media browser, then drag it onto the top layer of your video. Now drag it over the region of the clips that you want it to appear over. It could be part of the video or all of the clips on your timeline. By default, your transparent PNG file appears as a cutaway clip. And if you play on your timeline, you should see the logo appear at full size and it will be superimposed over your video. If you find it's moving, you need to click on the crop icon in the top menu and deselect the Ken Burns effect, which makes still images move and select the crop to fill option instead. 
Now make sure your logo fits inside the crop squares. If not, drag the corners of the crop tool so that the logo fits in. Click back on the video overlay option and you'll now see your logo in the middle of the screen as overlay on the footage. To resize it and reposition, we're now going to change from cutaway to PIP, picture in picture, and do the same thing we did in the earlier step, which is to reposition our logo and resize as needed. Another really cool thing you can do with multiple layers is to use background elements in iMovie. Click on the backgrounds tab in the top menu and you'll notice a range of interesting backgrounds you can apply to your project. Drag them down onto your timeline and then you can either add a still image or video on the top layer. You can use the split screen or picture in picture options we went through earlier to position your top layer over the background image. And now we're going to add some titles to our movie. To do so, click on the titles tab in the top left-hand menu. There are an extensive range of titles that come with their own font and animation styles and default positions ranging from center to lower thirds. A title is applied to an individual video clip by dragging it from the titles tab directly onto the clip on the timeline. You can change the start point or end point by dragging on the left of the purple title box on the timeline and you can even have it extend over multiple clips on the timeline by picking up the right hand edge of the title clip and dragging it to the right over as many clips as you like or even to the end of the project. Once you've decided where you want to place your title, click on the title layer on the timeline to make sure it's selected and then click on the text box in the video preview window to replace the default text with your own. You can then change the font, font size and color by using the sub menu option that appears above the video preview window. Also, if you want your text overlay to appear over multiple clips on the timeline, you can simply copy and paste them across. Let's now take a look at adding audio to our project. When you drag a movie clip onto the timeline, it'll bring with it its own audio track. You can see the audio track represented by the blue waveform sitting right below the video thumbnail on the timeline. To change the volume of the clip, you can drag the yellow line vertically up or down to make it louder or softer. You can grab the small dots at the beginning and the end to create a simple audio fade in or fade out effect. You can vary the level of the recording by creating keyframes on the audio track. To create a keyframe, go to the point in the timeline that you want to add a keyframe and click on the option key at the same time as clicking with your mouse. A yellow keyframe appears and you can now drag this vertically to adjust the volume. If you want a larger view of this, you can right click on the video track and click on the detach audio option this will place the audio track on its own layer and make it independent of the video track. This can also be used for advanced editing if you want to remove the audio from the point in the timeline without affecting the video. For example, I can trim out a clip by placing the mouse at any point in the audio track and use the split clip option at the beginning and the end of the section that I want to remove. I can delete the audio and the video from that section will remain intact. So once you've adjusted the audio of your video clips the way you want, or reduce the levels to zero if you don't want the audio included, you may want to add a music track. To do this, click on the audio tab in the top menu on the left, and then you'll get access to your iTunes library, sound effects and garage band. If you want to bring in your own original music, put it into iTunes first, and then import it that way. If you want to get access to the music supplied with iMovie, under the sound effects tab, select the theme music dropdown. Otherwise, you can also choose from a range of sound effects. The good thing about the audio is that you can keep dragging tracks down onto the audio timeline and layer them up, unlike the video option, which is limited to only two tracks. With audio, you can layer up virtually as many tracks as you like. Whilst we're on the audio, the other thing you can do is add a voiceover to your video. To do this, click on the microphone icon that appears under the video preview window. 
you'll see a red record button appear, a levels meter to show you your audio levels, and to the right of that, a settings option that lets you adjust the volume of your microphone input. And if you have an external microphone connected, you can switch from the internal microphone source to external. Go ahead and move the playhead to the position in the timeline that you want to start recording your voiceover and press the red record button. You'll get a three second counter and then you can start recording. Your voiceover will be recorded onto your audio timeline. So if you make a mistake at any point, you can go and edit it, delete it and record again. Now we're going to take a look at some of the advanced features in iMovie for optimizing your video and audio tracks. The first thing you can do when you drag your video onto your timeline is to apply an auto enhancement to the clip. To do this, click on the clip on the timeline and then click on the magic wand in the top section just above your video preview window. If you want more precise control over your clip, click on the color balance menu item, which is the second one next to the video overlay button here. You can select from auto to match color, white balance or skin tone. Choose the one that looks best with your footage. The third item along is the color correction option, which lets you change the brightness, contrast and color tones even further. Simply drag the sliders to get the results that you're looking for. The next is the crop tool, where you can crop into the video or if it's a still image, use it to select the Ken Burns effect or fit to crop option. The next is image stabilization, which you can use to smooth out rocky handheld footage. Click on the stabilize shaky video option and determine how strong you want to apply the effect and test out the results until satisfied. You can even select fix rolling shutter, which can improve motion shots taken while panning your camera. Next is the audio tool where you can auto optimize, adjust the volume and also opt to lower the volume of other clips against it. Next along is the noise reduction and equalizer tool that lets you reduce background noise out of your video, including humming, hissing sounds and rumble. It can even reduce the sound of industrial noises such as traffic, air conditioners and general environmental noise. You can determine the percentage of the effect with the slider and you can also try out some of the equalizer presets until you get the sound that you're after. You can choose from a flat preset to voice enhance, music enhance, loudness, and so on. Next is the speed option, which lets you change the speed of your clip. This can be a lot of fun, allowing you to slow down time, speed it up, and put things into reverse gear. To do this, click on the clip you want to affect in your timeline, then select the speed menu item in the drop down menu. Select the slow option if you want to slow your movie clip down. You can go from 10 to 25 or 50%. There's even an auto option where iMovie tries to detect the best frame rate for you depending on the way your video was shot. You can use the reverse checkbox to play the clip in reverse. And if you check preserve pitch, it will preserve the pitch of the audio. Conversely, if you want to speed things up, click on the fast drop down menu and again choose between the variations of speed provided. This time you get to choose between two times, four times, eight times and 20 times speed. Once again, experiment with all of these to find the best one to give you the effect that you're looking for. Next up is the clip filter, which lets you apply Instagram like effects to your video to change the look and feel completely. For example, there's a black and white filter, film grain, hard light, old world, x-ray, sci-fi, and more. And there's even a flip filter that lets you flip your clip horizontally for a mirrored effect. If you want to apply any of these effects globally, i.e. to all clips in your timeline, representing the entire project, then you can do this in the settings tab, which is under the main preview window. Let's go ahead and have a look at that now. Click on the settings option, click on filter, and then select the filter that you'd like to apply to the whole project. In this section, you can also opt to trim background music so it fits into the project, fade in from black and fade out to black. You can also adjust the clip size of your thumbnails in the timeline section, and you can opt to show or hide the audio waveform. At the top, you also get an option to select from themes where certain defaults will be applied, including transitions and title effects. If you click on automatic content, it will apply these transitions 
to all clips automatically. Finally, a quick word on saving and exporting your project. When you have finished editing, it's always worth checking the video over with a larger preview window. So now that you don't need to be accessing the media tab, you can click on the show hide media icon next to the project menu at the top to hide the media browser temporarily and view the video preview window on its own. You can drag the horizontal bar under the viewer to pull down the timeline and give more room to the video window. So now when you preview, you can see it much larger. You can even use the horizontal arrows under the viewer window to go to full screen. If you wanna get out of full screen, hit the escape button to exit and that will take you back to the regular preview mode. So once you've previewed your work, you're ready to save your project. Click on the projects icon, a pop-up window will appear where you can give your project a name and click OK to save. Now to share your project from within the projects tab, click on the thumbnail of your project and then you'll see a small circular icon appear next to the title. From the list of drop down options, you can choose to email your movie, send it to iTunes, directly to YouTube, Facebook or Vimeo. Or if you select the file option, you can save it down to your hard drive to share later at any stage. If you choose this option, you also get to select the format. For example, you can export it out as an audio file, which might be the case if you want to, for example, use the audio from your video to create a podcast. But most commonly, you'll be selecting a video because iMovie is all about creating movies. So when you do, you'll get an option between 540p, 720p, 1080p, and even 4K. These have to do with the resolution of the video and will depend on where you're sharing the video. For example, if you wanted a small file, 540p would be appropriate. If you're uploading a video to YouTube or Facebook, then you might be looking at 720p or 1080p. And if you want the highest possible quality for showing your work on large 4K TVs, for example, you'd select the 4K option. The next drop down lets you select the quality of the video from low to best. You can also choose between a faster render and highest quality render, which will result in the best video file. If you look at the information on the left, an estimate of the render time and megabyte file size will appear under the preview of the movie. And that's all I've got for you on this initial tutorial video. I did mention very briefly an option for green screen video. If you wanna know more about how to create green screen videos, I've actually created a separate video on that topic and I'll leave a link to it in the description box below. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to hit me up with a like and consider subscribing to the channel and you'll be notified of up and coming video releases. Also, if you have any questions about what you've seen today or would like to make any suggestions for future videos, feel free to put them in the comments box below. Bye for now.